Hi, I'm Benny Knott from Noisy Post, and in this video, I'm gonna be covering one of the questions that was asked of me in a previous video on the Fairlight desktop console, and that is, what does the HDMI display? Let's have a look. I wanna thank you guys for watching my videos, and I appreciate it when you write in the comments and ask questions. I really wanna show this thing off to you to make sure that it'll work in your workflow, and so you can make a good informed decision on whether it's gonna work for you or not. Now let's get into it. So we've got the mixing console here. Uh, I've opened a project, which is just one of my old tutorials because to be honest, it's copyright free content. I don't have to ask permission to use it. And then we have the display here uh, of the console. Now I'm just gonna go through all the different functions. So I'll give you a top down of the mixer as well so that you can see the buttons that I'm pressing. So what you're seeing now is the main window that's coming out of the HDMI. Now we have 12 faders. So you're gonna see all 12 faders and some basic parameters. One quick tip I wanna show you, which I mentioned in one of the previous videos is selecting our channels. When we go into our functions, it will be for each channel we select, but we can select different channels, so we can go across and just keep selecting them. If we double press, it will select one or another channel, so we can, it'll kind of like unselect the other ones. And if you want to, you can, so if we're holding down this one and double press that one, it will select from, you know, A to B. Now that we've got that sorted, one thing to note that when you're in one of these modes, you have to press this enable button to change channels. Uh, otherwise, these buttons, they're being used for functions the select buttons get used as like on and off EQs. So if we're not holding down enable, we can't select other channels. One thing to note though, is this double press business. So it un un selects the other one, doesn't work when you're in one of these channel modes. It's not an issue because basically the last button that you've pressed, even though the other ones are selected, the last button you pressed, the functions will work for that. We've got our master bus or master page, sorry, which shows at the top our buses and then next under that is our tracks. Now it'll show you your stem. So once you have a proper project setup, obviously this is basic and I'm just going to a stereo output, but you would have all your different stems. You might have your Atmos stems, your stereo stems, your 5.1 stems, uh, as well as your masters uh, and your you know down mixes and all that kind of stuff. So you've obviously got your tracks next and underneath that, so that bus is the volume for each track. So if we enable and we're gonna select DX channel, so now that bus is our DX channel. So we could technically turn down the output for all our different stems. So, you know, the best way to think of that is maybe if you do like a mix minus or you wanna have a second mix, let's say it's a second music mix and you want your, you wanna have a separate master that has a little bit less vocal or less kick drum, you might just drop that down by 3 dB. There are lots of uses for it, but most of the time it will just be set to zero or you'll mute it if you don't want it to go into a separate bus. So anyway, that's your master page. Then we got channel page, which shows you an overview of your whole channel. So this is where the select buttons turn on and off EQs. So we've got a full overview here. We've even got our EQ, we've got compressor, limiter, pan, and then front to back pan as well, all on the one page, which is helpful because we can just do some quick adjustments, but it'll be just, you know, we can, you can see there, we can boost the different frequencies, but we can't actually change the cue or anything like that. We can also turn them off and on. So if you don't want those EQs off, on or off, you can press the select button there. So just so you know, if you want to change channels, we just go enable and then we go FX1. And when we come back, we're on the FX1 channel. So as I said, it'll be the last one you've selected. So that's just a full overview and you can see, so anything in blue on that means that you have functionality over it. Um, so if we go to pan, we get, obviously the window doesn't change for us, but we have more functions here. So we've got left, right, front, back, up and down, uh, rotate as well. So if you're in 5.1, you want to rotate the whole sound around you, you can do that, but you'll see that it goes blue. Uh, we've got plugin. Now with plugin, it will show you a list of your plugins there. So you've got a list of your plugins uh, and I've got the RX up there. Now, one thing I, I'd like to show you. So in your, your main window for dissolve, now normally you could have a mixer here. So we can press the mixer and you can show the whole mixer here, but there's almost no point having that. If you've got a two monitor setup, you could have the output of this as one monitor and your second monitor could be your editor, 
which is your main computer window. But in that setup, then you can have your your waveform, your timeline. It's got meters here as well at the top, which you'll have on the other side. But, you know, so the other side at the moment is the buses. So you can see the output on this is showing your buses where your output on your main monitor is the tracks. So it's good because you've got a split of both. You can see your master faders and you can see your separate audio tracks. Uh, so really this mixer window is kind of irrelevant when you've got, you know, your main window on the output of this, or if you want to go into, you know, your different modes. So let's go to plugin mode. You get a good overview of that channel that you're on and you just don't need that mixer as well. So that gives you more real estate for that. Technically we can open our plugin. So you can see that we've got four. So it won't open the last plugin that you've closed the window. Uh, for some reason, it's a bit of a glitch, but if we press another plugin, then we can go back to it, play with that. So that helps because it means we can always hide our plugins. The only thing is you've got to actually close that window. So again, so I had uh, plugin three open then, and that won't open again, but if we go to say two or one, that'll be fine. I hope that makes sense. All right, and so next we've got EQ, obviously, the window doesn't change, doesn't make our EQ bigger, but it will highlight all the EQ and we've got all the functions there. So we've got two pages to go. The second page is control EQ. This is something I'm discovering now, but if you want to go back to the first page, you just press EQ again. So that's kind of like, let's go to page two, page two. If you want to go back to page one, just press EQ again. Okay. And so we've got all our functions here and we can then dive further into it. You know, we can pick our frequency, uh, change the cue. One thing to note with some of these features, so like, let's just say pan, right? So if we're in pan, there's a pretty small display of the pan window, which to be honest, it depends where your monitor is, you know, that might be enough for you. But if you really want to, you could have a separate screen open. Now we can open something like the panner and have that, you know, say on a second monitor and depending on where we change. So if we go to effects one or DX, that's always there. So it's kind of annoying to have to click to the mixer just to open that up. I've had a quick look and I don't think there's any way to quickly bring that up. Uh, and unfortunately the mixer doesn't, you know, there should be an option and I'm going to tell Blackmagic that maybe if you press say shift and pan or something, it will bring up that window for you. So if you want to, you know, get a bigger display version of it, um, cause it's kind of nice to have that in front of you while you're doing some panning. Um, that may not be something that interests you, but I think it'd be cool to be able to open up that window and not have to, you know, go through to the mixer because you'd have to open the mixer and double click on that or, you know, say the EQ and stuff like it's kind of nice. That's a nice big EQ, which, you know, you might not need that because you can see it all there, but it's kind of nice to have the option if you want to click and open that as well, that would be great. But again, you can leave that open. So, you know, we can move to the different channels and it's going to follow those channels but I would suggest that if you want to, you can stick it on a second monitor. You could even have all those open. So pan and, and all that sort of stuff open. And then, you know, it'll change as you change through the channels. So just to summarize, we have three great windows. This one is your track window, which will show all 12 tracks and give you a small overview of each one. Uh, we have our master bus, which uh, that page shows you all your master buses, as well as a track overview. Then we have our main channel overview, and this gives you an overview of just one track at a time, and it shows you all your parameters to do with that track. So that's the three pages you've got there. So honestly, for the price point of this mixer and a computer monitor, it is amazing. Like, Honestly, the f visual feedback is so helpful. Thanks so much for joining me. Appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos and ask questions. And uh, I'll do my best to produce as many videos based off your questions so you get to know this console and see if it's right for you and your workflows. Uh, but also do the usual, subscribe so you can see future videos. Chuck us a like because that'll be helpful. And I'll see you on the next one.